We demonstrate an awake fiber optic nasotracheal intubation performed on one of our senior faculty using only oxymetazoline, lidocaine 5% ointment, and lidocaine 4% nebulization and insufflation in order to topicalize the mucous membranes. As you will see in the video, our faculty experienced minimal discomfort. The only untoward sensation he described was slight difficulty swallowing secretions during lidocaine nebulization. This should be conveyed to the patient prior to the procedure. So the first step of this procedure is to topicalize the patient's airway. Uh, right now we are nebulizing 5 mLs of 4% lidocaine through a nebulizer. Remember to reduce the oxygen flow to 5 liters per minute at this step so that you have larger particle size that will topicalize the airway only and not get down into the trachea. The next step of the procedure is to apply Afrin spray to the nostrils to reduce the rate of epistaxis. Okay. After giving Afrin, we'll go ahead and or atomize one ml of 4% lidocaine into each neris. Now insert a nasopharyngeal airway into the nair that we will be placing the endotracheal tube. We've chosen a NP airway that is a similar size to the endotracheal tube we'll be using, in this case a 30 French NP airway, uh, which has an external diameter of 10 millimeters. This should support a 7O ET tube, which, is a, which has an external diameter of 9.5. We're gonna go ahead and apply liberally 5% lidocaine ointment to the NP airway, which will both dilate the nose and anesthetize it as well. inserting this along the floor of the nose. Okay. That's okay. Thank you. And we'll just let that sit there for a few seconds to anesthetize the nose. Seven O E T tube uh, for females. You will typically go with a six five or seven O E T tube if you're going through the nose. For males, a seven O to seven point five E T tube. Uh, this has been warmed up in warm water to make the tube more flexible and reduce the incidence of epistaxis when placing the tube. We're also going to get our scope prepared at this time by hooking up the port on the scope to oxygen, which we will run anywhere between two and four liters. This allows you to insufflate as you go down through the airway. So once the NP airway is removed, we're going to go ahead and apply more lidocaine ointment to the tip of the ET tube. Is it soft? The tube? Yeah. The tube's soft, yeah. All right. 
Just trying to avoid the tip so the camera doesn't get yeah. turned up. And we are now going to place the endotracheal tube in the nares. We're subtotally intubating to anywhere between 12 and 15 centimeters. Uh, a good marker for depth is the large ET tube, size, ET tube size number on the tube is about the depth you want to go. That's usually anywhere between 12 and 15 centimeters. Yeah. Here you go. And you're just inserting this just as you would an NP airway along the floor of the nose. And ideally, the tip will be in the posterior or Keep pharynx going. superior to the glottis. There you go. Hurt some crack, but sure it's okay. Once the tube's inserted in the nose, we will pass our scope through the endotracheal tube. This is where having an assistant is really hum helpful. And we are going to now advance the scope down through the tube and come out of the tip of the tube and identify our anatomy next. Remember to avoid coming out of the Murphy eye. And here we can see the posterior tongue. We're going to advance down past the tongue and the first structure we'll identify is the epiglottis. Just down at six o'clock on our screen. This is where we'll make our first injection of 1% lidocaine, 4%. Remember to have your assistant kink off the oxygen tubing, because if you don't, it will squirt back up through the scope. Have your assistant attach the lidocaine, and then inject it. Again, this is one ml of lidocaine with four cc's of air, so that the lidocaine will come out of the tip of the scope. We'll then give that a second or two to take effect, and continue advancing the scope. we're going to advance past the epiglottis and do our second injection of 4% lidocaine through the bronchoscope onto the cords themselves. Just try and keep your object that you're trying to get to in the center of your screen, as we're doing here. It's just a slow, methodical advancement of the scope down past the epiglottis, which is now well anesthetized, down to the level of the cords. And at this point, we are going to give our second dose of 4% lidocaine, again, 1 ml in a 5cc yeah. syringe, which is then filled with air. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Just basically okay. makes you want to swallow. Huh? Once the cords have been anesthetized, we will now advance the scope through this the vocal cords. At this point, if your patient is not sedated, having them assist you by asking them to breathe in at this point to keep the cords open. Otherwise, you're timing it to advance the scope through the cords, as we just did here, down into the trachea while they're open. Okay. We're now going to drive the scope down to the carina and administer our last dose of 4% lidocaine through the bronchoscope to anesthetize the trachea. Uh, it's not bad. At this point, we are now ready to advance the scope. And this is generally a two-person technique where the bronchoscopist is holding the scope and visualizing the airway while the assistant advances the endotracheal tube down through the cords, as we are doing right now. 
for most adults, you'll have to advance the ET tube almost to the hub to get it into the airway. And here we can see it appearing on our screen now, just above the carina. We can measure the distance from the carina to the endotracheal tube at this point too, to assure that it's at an appropriate location. And we can now withdraw the scope. At this point, we would inflate our balloon. And that is how a awake fiber optic nasotracheal intubation is performed.